Hey guys, my name is Gaurav and welcome to Social Kandura's Beyond the Feed. Today we are going to be speaking with the finalists of the Filmfare Middle East Social Night where not only do they recognize some of the finest content creators but also give them a platform to express what they have created so far. Our idea with this series is to give you an insight about what each of your favorite content creator looks like in real life, their experiences and also to give you insight about their lives and what got them there. Starting off, we have the finalists of the health and fitness category where we've put down together some of the best influencers and we've shortly listed the five we're going to be talking about what health and fitness means to them mental well-being importance of food importance of workout and everything in between here are our guests lifestyle you know with your work and everything you need to balance it out and I think for me when I started working out it transformed me entirely right. I remember when I was in like 11th class when I was starting working out and it changed me into a person I was it made me more confident right it made me more like realizing what you kind of really want to do in life right and, it, and I think it really helps to keep you focused you know it keeps and, you balanced and, and you know, do, do you think like the more you work out your your world sort of opens up to a lot of other opportunities as well because mentally you're more stimulated and definitely definitely I mean you can you you can be competitive in every field of your life. It sure. becomes much more easier because now you're now you're competing with yourself in the gym every day. Right. So you kind of feel that you're competing in real life as well, and you right. and you're more confident in general. It just becomes much more easy, much more smoother. Right. Yeah. And I think that's it. That's why I started. And to be honest, when you keep on going with it, it just becomes so addictive now that it, it is so difficult to take a day off that you hardly have to. You really have to convince yourself that Sunday is a day off. I don't have to hit the gym. Yeah. Seven days. <laughs> yeah. seven days. Um, and what is like, for example, you know. Obviously, when, when we are working out, we are doing a lot of things for physical stance. How important is having the right nutrition? How important is having the right diet for what we're doing? Uh, so. I feel it's extremely important to nourish your bodies in the way it truly needs to be nourished. Now, I know for a fact that not everyone is the same and not every diet goes for the same person. What works for me might not work for everyone. Sure. But the balance, the true balance of good nutrition plus physical workout plus trying to keep your mind at more of a stable yet a positive way is really important for life. And I always feel like health is not one day or it's not one, day, uh, one hour of your life right. it is a continuum yeah. and I kind of want to imagine it like a river with two ends right. one is wellness and the other is illness and the wow. flow is like age right. as you age you are more prone to getting illnesses your body is getting weaker your body needs more nutrition and your body is trying to kind of getting tired at the time right okay. so with the correct nutrition plus a good physical workout routine and having a mental happy stable round of people it's very important to be social right. so okay. and that really keeps you positive so having that balance kind of helps you to have the energy to swim towards wellness right. and move from illness away and move towards wellness that's a very interesting yeah. uh, yeah. very interesting idea of how you put that together how do we deal with you know fitness as general there are there are the two types of people or there are two types of fitnesses that you do one is where you look six pack abs eight pack abs whatever and the other is where you actually fit so what do you think really makes a difference? Is having is someone with a six pack ab considered to be fit or is someone who looks normal but has a lot of strength and has a lot of endurance, is that considered to be fit? What would be your, uh, your take on that? 
for me, it's more healthy if you. Uh, it's not about the shape, you know, because the shape is just genetic. It's, right. it's, yeah, it's not just uh, like. It's not meaning fat, yeah. I'm yeah. training a lot of people, and uh, some of them, they, their shape is like big muscles and have six packs. Yeah. But if you run with me for 100 meters, you, you get that. <laughs> so <laughs> so, so it's be it's not healthy at all, yeah. yeah. So it's it has just to be a mix shape, yeah. Stamina and also obviously muscle shape and all of those yeah, things. Yeah, and, and it's how you get the shape. Right. Some okay. people get strides or. <laughs> That's or all. maybe he has a good gen and he's just yeah. doing workouts. Correct. Yeah, and, uh, and it's you not meaning that you are, you are healthy. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, health is not only about looking fit. You right. need to be fit in your mind. You need to be fit in your gut. People sometimes they have a lot of abs and they show muscles, but they cannot eat an array of food sometimes. Correct. They have a you know, number of allergies, they have a number of intolerances. Right. And that doesn't mean that your gut is healthy. As a human being, you're able, you should be able to digest everything. You should be able to consume all types of foods so when you're not able to do that then you should understand that yes something is wrong so health for I think it's a general definition of health you know it's mental physical as well as social health well-being is health so fitness is very important along with you know nutrition and yes, everything totally, totally true I'm in this industry for 10 years and some of my friends are around 70% of the trainer in the market, they eat McDonald's, KFC. Oh, wow. okay. I'm so sorry for saying that with their name brand. Yeah. 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 They almost eat a fast food, what I mean. And <laughs> almost 70% of them, they smoke. Oh, so wow. what about the health of that? Yeah. So you're and not saying the right items yeah. for them? For them yeah, so yeah. I'm, I'm sorry for saying <laughs> <laughs> no, <of course> you <laughs> the names. I know it's not. Uh, and you know, I'm talking generally. Yeah, and all of you guys have like such amazing Instagram followers. You know, mm -hmm. you guys have such engaged audience. You guys are pretty much role models for everybody that's looking to get started in the health. What was the point? Like, when did you find the understanding that, you know what, I'm doing A, I'm doing fitness, I'm doing a great job. What was the turning point that you decided that, no, I want to be on Instagram and I want to be seen on Instagram? How did that happen? And what was like your, for example, for your, what, when did you start and be like, right, I need to start showing the world. Because it's a pretty big step, you know, where you start filming yourself that, you know, I'm doing this workout, you know, how does, how did that, when did that journey uh, start? Um, so for me, um, I, I started, I mean, I, I started posting on Instagram and I think I was in my first year okay. of college because, okay, so I wanted to do modeling, but because right. of my skin issues, as she said, I had gut issues, so I had yeah. a lot of acne, I couldn't do that. Then I started posting on Instagram and it, it went pretty well. Nice. Um, and then, so like my dad, my uncles, they were all in, like they were all in sports. So I've been working out since I was pretty young. Okay. And then I used to work out, but I am a very body conscious person and I was very hesitant to put it on Instagram because you do get comments, you do get yes. criticized. That, yes. Oh, you're so thin. Why are you even working out? Even today when, when anyone uh, opens my feet, uh, and they're like, why do you even work out? You don't have to work out. I think you should oh, eat more yeah. rather than work out. Yeah. You're so lean, like, you know, in future it will be very difficult. You're a woman, all sorts of things. Correct, yeah. yeah. Um, but, but there was a point when I saw other people also post and um, I started eating, uh, you know, better food, which helped me with my gut issues, with right. my acne. And that's when I started posting more on Instagram. Um, and I think there were there were this set of people who actually inspired me and motivated me because they were like, "Oh, we really like how you work out. Right. How do you even do that?" Because because I am lean, I'm more flexible, and I can do things. Correct. And then I did a small course from ACSM, uh, like on how to train people. So I did that. Then I did train people. I was in Mumbai, so uh, for a for short. So there's a lot of training, time. and there was yeah. Yeah, I did that. I, I used yeah. to work in the hypoxic chamber where where I used to train very obese people oh, wow. with okay. uh, different uh, uh, altitude levels and all of that. Oh, okay. So I did that, and then I think I was content with my body and like how I look and how my body is, and then. Yeah. Um, also because I got a lot of support from the social media, I think sure. that also helped me post and, more. Like and do you think like there is always a difference between, you know, what you see on Instagram, what you see in the movies and what you see in real life? <laughs> you know, I'm sure you guys, when you're, when you're training people, uh, you know, people, and I do this to my personal trainer as well, I go up to them like, hey, here's what, you know, Tom Cruise looks like, make me look like that, you know, you have six months time. Yeah. And the trainer is always like, you know, oh, it's about dedication, it's about food, it's about, you know, I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'll do everything. In six months, I need to look like Tom Cruise. <laughs> How do you do? Because that's Instagram, right? Before I, mean, I was thinking to talk about that, yeah. not all influencer on Instagram is real life. Almost 90%, maybe 95% is fake. 
Okay. So we know how to shoot. We know how which angle shows a muscle. But uh, when you see me at <laughs> at the real in the real life, so you see different persons. So right. what I would like to say to the audience. Uh, not all influencers will motivate you. We can motivate you by talking, by, but it's not like just by just, I'm showing my muscle, I'm showing my photo, but in the real life, it's not like that. Because right. sometimes we scroll Instagram, yes. I see a lot of Facebook, I want to be like that. Yes. And like what you said, I'm going to my personal trainer, I want to be like that for six months. I'm training for six months, and then after six months, there is nothing. Correct. So it's not about that. Just train for yourself and make yeah. it a habit for yourself, for your healthy, not just to show off. We just show off with some angles, with okay. some shape, but all of these facts. So it's similar to how. Well, actually, I would disagree on that, you know, because I mean, a person will start with a certain frame of mind. If you don't have a goal in terms of which is very lifestyle oriented or whatever, I mean, because that's what we're essentially selling here, you know. We're selling in terms of how what you can be, what is your potential, you know. And I, I absolutely agree in the terms of that you cannot sustain a six pack ab body with a healthy lifestyle in the long term. But honestly, I've been doing this for the last two years and I eat whatever you're saying. I eat everything and I've been maintaining this. So not really, it's not impossible. And I, talking about steroids and everything as well, I mean, you need to make sure, like, I don't have, I'm not a trainer, so I don't train any clients, but I've seen people coming up to me and say, how can we get this in like this much time of frame, right? Yeah. But you need to tell them, I mean, this, this person who has this body, he probably would be on something that you cannot, you shouldn't take if you're not competing. And let's be honest, bodybuilding yeah. across the world, everybody's on steroid, everybody knows it. Yes. And that's how you achieve that it, body. It's, it's okay a beautiful with, physique. Maybe, maybe your gene is good. It's no, not, no, I mean, that, genes that, are, that mean all people can do no, that. No, I mean, it's not about people, what people can do or what people cannot do. It's all about making the people realize that this is what you can be. I mean, yeah, this yeah. is what you can be with your lifestyle, with everything. It's a certain target you gotta put up in their mind, you know, because otherwise, if they don't have the six month target goal, they're not gonna turn up to the gym, you know. Yeah, but also, I remember looking at this, uh, you know, remember John Abram from that movie, I don't remember. I remember looking at him when I was very young. Yeah. That inspired me. I turned up to the gym and it's been like seven years I've been doing it. You know, I mean, talking but, about inspiration, I feel like all the Instagram feeds that we see, you know, the, yeah. as you said, the correct angles and the body that is like, it yeah. looks like some Greek gods, yes, right? Yeah. But I, I personally feel that we should take it as inspiration and not as a challenge. You yeah. know, looking at that. I mean, take that, it whatever way you want yeah. it. You got a book. Yeah, you should inspire. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. if you want to take it as a challenge, if you want to take it as a motivation, it doesn't really matter. Actually, when it comes to challenges, no, I feel like people just get demotivated in the end because it's sometimes not possible. I mean, it's too is positive reinforcement and negative yeah, reinforcement. Yeah, exactly. Eighty percent of that is not possible, by the way. What is not possible? Genetics to get like. No, no, uh, I, I, I want the shape of Tom Cruise. I, I want the shape of Arnold. Genetics, you know. It's not, it's it's not the shape not of Arnold. Like, it's not like, like, like one in. It's yeah. one in two hundred. It's ninety-five percent, maybe ninety-nine percent. But right. One more thing that we also need. Just one more thing that we also need to keep in mind is when we're looking at these celebrities, right? We need to understand that they have. Full time people who are focusing yeah. only on the diet. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Full time people that are focusing only on the training. And then they sleep for at least a lot of the day. So exactly. <laughs> they, they have a huge amount of They don't, they don't yeah. take any sugar, they don't yeah. take yes. any. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So that, fat, like, like, for example, on a day to day life, you know, mm -hmm. we've seen a lot of uh, you know influencers, especially when it comes to health, they talk about, you know, like you were saying, there's like, you know, oh, don't have sugar, don't have this. But the next picture you see, they're having mm -hmm. Coke or they're having diet. Coke, <laughs> yeah. You know? yeah. So that basically defeats the whole purpose of what the whole uh, idea looks like but uh, don't you guys also think that uh, again again to that point you know yeah. if you look at my feed it's a balance you know correct yeah. i mean everybody knows that i smoke i drink but what people should realize that I do it at such a controlled level that it doesn't really affect my lifestyle. But everybody knows that I don't sleep, which I know is not healthy though. Yeah. Which I know is not healthy though. Yeah. But I mean, again, uh, I don't know what people are saying, but what I'm essentially I am portraying on Instagram is exactly what I'm doing. Right. So there's there's no filter. There is. Like, I mean, there's filter. Of course, I have my own private life, but in terms of what I'm doing and how I'm doing it, it's clear. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. I mean, that's how it should be because if it's all fake, yeah, I mean, then you're bullshitting me. You know? I, I didn't say all fake. No, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. This is not all. Almost ninety-five percent. Of course, of course influencers I mean, are fake. So, so just to be really honest over here, uh, leave the influencers. Everybody is on Instagram. They're doing something or the other. I mean, they get the best. They yeah, try to show the best of their life. Of course, which is fine. Which is fine. So the other side of their yeah, life. Of course. Yeah. But I'm talking when the followers just look to your life on your Instagram, like, oh wow, this guy is so famous, so uh, rich. Yeah. yeah, I want to be like that. So after one, after 10 minutes you scrolling on Instagram, you will get upset. 
Why I don't have this life? Why I don't have this body? But we just chose that some angles and some, uh, that's what I mean. Yeah, no, fair. So nice, fair. fair. But how much do you think Instagram plays an important role when you are, for example, speaking to brands or you're speaking to potential people? Mm -hmm. Does it really make a big difference if you have a huge Instagram following, you have a good presence, you're working with brands? Does it make a difference having that follower count, follower numbers, or is it just some vanity metrics which, you know, like you said, a lot of people are just buying now? What is your, uh, your take on that? I mean, again, I'll say the quality of your content would be the most significant, no matter how I many agree. followers you have. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it needs to be a mix of the quality of content yeah. and this, Absolutely. right? And, and how to engage engagement with your followers. Yes, how to engage with them as well at the, at the right point as well. Yeah. Uh, we know with this new trend of everybody now, a lot of younger people, you know, who are like, let's say 16, 17, 18 at this stage of time. I remember like, you know, 10 years ago, Instagram, Facebook was not what it is today. You know, Instagram Reels was just approached like three years ago, four years ago, even less than that. Uh, the new generation that's coming up, you know, they obviously follow you guys and they see you guys, you know, working out and, you know, doing this and doing that. They are like, okay, you know what, I want to do that in my life. And there are two types of people that do this. One is that, okay, I'll start following what these guys are doing. And the second is I'll pretend to be working out and I'll pretend to be doing all of those things. At the same time, within your own industry as well, there are a lot of people who will pretend to show who they are not, but they will still get engaged over there. So how do you balance keeping, you know, for example, okay, this is what the reality of things is, this is who the real person is, and this is who that you have to pretend to show, like you said, certain angles to show certain muscles and all of those things. How do you draw the line? Where do you say, okay, this is real, this is what like I'm flexing for Instagram? How does that work? So basically when I started my Instagram, my goal was very clear. Yeah. So I'm a dietitian that I, and I specialize in disease management. Right. So I just wanted to spread awareness that diseases can be cured, managed or prevented using the correct lifestyle and the correct diet. Right. Okay. So for me, my target audience might not have been the 16 year olds. Right. right? Yeah. Of course, I have many followers now that are in the younger age group and they want to prevent the future diseases because they are more aware of it now. Right. But initially, I just started off that okay I have this knowledge of how I can help people heal their bodies and how I can help them you know reduce their symptoms painful symptoms okay. so with that in mind my goal was very clear so it was not just to create this big uh, you know Instagram account that had just something on it yeah something on it it had a meaning so I feel like whenever I see an Instagram Instagrammer who has a meaning behind their posts who has like a message to give who has like a you know positive even if it's just entertainment you know you scroll and you laugh on it it's it's amazing it still is good yeah. yeah it's still good but when I see someone who is just doing everything that everyone else is doing and they're just trying to you know it's like a mixture it's like a mixture of everything that everyone else is doing right. they just no it's just a wannabe uh, yeah you know yeah. so i think you can yeah. i think now all of us can spot a wannabe yeah. Correct. because yeah. we are also creators exactly so we can tell when someone is truly interested in giving a message and giving like you know some helpful tips right. and when someone is just trying to increase the followers and just trying to right. be like someone else yeah so i feel like we can spot it now i have Fair a feeling it also is a big challenge, like content creation itself is a very big challenge, okay? So how are you guys managing to, because I personally feel content creation is an art, okay? Not everybody can just turn the camera on and be like, right, hey guys, I'm doing this today and I'll do that. So now working out itself is a very methodical and a very uh, proper way of doing it. You know, you've got to have the right ways, you've got to have the right thing. How did the journey start off? Okay, I need to take these angles. These are the angles. This is where I need to keep my phone. This is where I need to do that. This is the shot that looks nice. Because when I try to take pictures or like, you know, uh, videos when I'm working on the gym, all the angles are off. There's nothing that's aesthetic about it. But when you guys do it, it looks so nice. You know what I mean? How much experimentation goes into, okay, I need to get this angle. And how many times do you redo? Like, for example, okay, I'll do three sets. But just for this, I have to do five sets, six sets. Does content creation interfere with what you purposely want to do or is it just a part of what you're doing and you're just recording it? Which which one is more? Yeah, of course it does interfere. Yeah. I mean when I'm filming my workouts as compared to when I'm just doing it, yeah. it's entirely different, you know? True, yeah. Because, I mean, sometimes you get this right and doing it that wrong, so you kind of have to experiment. And to be honest, filming while working out is not that really good. I mean, you don't enjoy the workout that Exactly, much, yeah. because you're very distracted. You're very now. distracted, yeah. And so you're right, it goes to three, from three sets, it goes to like six sometimes, yeah. I mean, it's a good yeah. workout in the day. I mean, it depends <laughs> how much you're exhausting and resting, so, yeah. yeah. Exactly. And you also get a lot of comments, you know, and for example, 
if you do something which is slightest slightest wrong, you know, if you do instead of taking the, the barrels first and then the rolls after, your comments are just people just completely assassinating you, you know. Oh, this is the wrong way to do it, you're doing it wrong, you'll hurt your back, blah, 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 blah. How do you deal with that negative criticism? Do you just shove it into the carpet and be like, yeah, okay, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about? Or do you guys actually address it and do you guys like, okay, this is wrong, do you try to explain it? How does it, because that's a very big part of being a big content creator. Everybody will have opinions on what you're doing. So how do you deal with like negative comments? What are your uh, takes on that? I, th I think I just need to explain more to them because mm -hmm. maybe I'm wrong. Why not? True. Yeah. So I accept that. So, so you accept maybe, it maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, if you're talking in a good way, so yeah. maybe I'm wrong. So okay. I need to explain or understand what he what he's saying. Sure. Yeah. That. Because that is also something that you know a lot of people, anybody with an Instagram account can just comment whatever that they want. There's yeah, no yeah. control over it as well. Yeah, but sometimes so, it's so negative and without any reason, they just say like. <laughs> something bad on you, so yeah, you just ignore it. Just at this at this point, you just ignore it. I, mean, I don't you just need to miss it. You know? Yeah, I don't. Yeah, so many notifications <laughs> just get so yeah, 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 it. It's fine. I don't need to answer. It doesn't matter. Yeah. 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 Let's just leave need. the comments in general. Let's just yeah. talk about real life. You know, just let's just forget about Instagram. I mean, people will criticize you everywhere you go. Yeah. 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 Not bother about it, to be honest. Exactly. I mean, because you got to choose your. Control circle, you know, because the, this is a book called Seven Habits, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Right. And this, he talks about this four quadrants, you know. So there are certain things you can control. Correct. There are certain things you cannot control, and there are certain things that are like definitely very important. Right. So you want to choose just the things you can control and are very important, and focus on them. Right. Yeah. And then other quadrants it can come later, you know. Correct. What about yeah. that you don't have control over? Yeah. Just let it go. I mean. Yeah. And it's not even I mean, maybe it's too important, but if you can't control it, you can't change it, you know. Correct. Yeah. So exactly. just leave it, you know. If something that's not in your hands is nothing that. Nothing you, you can, can do, do then you can undo that. Yeah. Um, coming back to what Confab is doing with the social lights, uh, yeah. you know, you guys obviously are the top five, top six that we've uh, that we've got in. How is the whole journey like? How did you get to know about it, and uh, what's the support that you're getting for this? And uh, you know, it's on the thirty first. Are you guys excited? Are you guys curious to see how are your fans reacting to your nominations? How's all of that? We can start with you. How's all of that looking? So everything is just super excited, and it's kind of like a dream sort of nice. and I'm just waiting for the 31st to be honest okay. and uh, now that I've finally met everyone so it's gonna be a nice round of us to sit there and enjoy like you've met your competitors no, now you know, no, no, no. <laughs> You know what, being very honest, I am so proud of all of us that are sitting here because we are all somehow reaching out to people and trying to the help them better their lives. Correct. Right? So because when it comes to health and fitness, I feel like there is no competition. We are all we all have our own USPs and we are all here to just help others. So we should rather help each other also helping others than being each other's competition. So no matter who wins, it's gonna be great. It'll be lovely if it's me. But nonetheless, I'll be happy for anyone and everyone because the work that we are doing, Correct, it's yes. so helpful and it's such a like a noble cause, I would say. Why yeah, not? I mean, and then, and then you know? at the end of the day, you are going to be like a very, very yeah, good yeah. yeah. Uh, so how are your fans reacting to, you know, being the top five? And then some of them start to motivate me to keep going and they actually I was surprised when they messaged me from fair but uh, what I'm like on this not just when I'm like uh, they motivate me to shoot more and to, right. to be active right more. yeah to be active more because for a long time I'm not active that much correct yeah. so they motivate me to be active more with my uh, audience and cover more yeah. sets. my family is not my audience yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. and how's yours been uh, my Instagram family support me always and Very good, yeah. uh, and uh, they ask um, about the link of Infair right and they put stories and they word a lot Correct, yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, I support also them mentions and Correct, yeah. Yeah, in real life I'll so meet. it's two ways, it's yeah, both yeah, two ways, yeah. Yes. Gotcha. How's your uh, reaction been? I, I am definitely excited and so is like my Instagram family. Yeah. Um, as you said that, you know, they also started, uh, you know, a more, yeah, that, you know, you should post more because I, I moved to Dubai a couple of uh, months ago. Okay. So because I started working, you know, you don't get so much of time. Back there, I had like a lot of time, so I used to create something. Right. And yes, like they, they, they also uh, like, you know, started posting uh, my links and all the, all the posts which is there on Instagram. And yes, I think they are equally excited as I am, and I'm 
I'm pretty much looking forward to the event and so to see who wins. Yeah. Amazing. And you said, I, was I think it's an amazing opportunity, first of all. I mean, thank you for it. I was at the Danube launch, you know, when I got okay. to know about this event yeah. happening. And they, they asked me, you should go for it, you should nominate yourself, and you should just kind of interact with people to kind of engage and get your audience as well, like kind of just yeah. be on the platform, you know. And then uh, that's how I applied, and then we got shortlisted. I think the probably got in touch with me. Yeah, but. Uh, I think it's definitely a, a very big opportunity, to be honest. I mean, you're talking about filmfare, you know how big is it in it's India, you know? Name. It's a yes. big, big name. And when yeah. Indian audience sees this, they're like, wow, oh my God, this is amazing, you know? Mission, yeah. yeah. So, uh, absolutely, very exciting. Let's see what happens. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you so much, each one of you individually, for taking time and speaking to us and sharing about all of your experiences. Before we leave, just mm -hmm. a quick, quick final touch up on, uh, you know, things. A lot of what we see on, real life versus what we see on real life, we know that there is always a difference. Uh, at the end of the day, we all follow you guys. We all see all the amazing workouts that you're doing. So a huge thank you from all of, on behalf of all of your audiences and behalf of us for keeping us A, entertained with all the amazing content that you guys are putting out there, which keeps us entertained, keeps us motivated, keeps us going out. And two is showing us the right way, like you very rightly said that when I see someone looking a certain part and I know that, you know, if I work really hard, I can achieve maybe 50% or 30% of that, I'll be happy. Mm -hmm. So thank you, all of you guys individually, for keeping us motivated with all of those contexts and uh, everything else as well. Uh, thanks so much. It's been an absolute pleasure. And uh, we'll see all of you guys on the 31st. Thank you. 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 Thank you.